KNBZ 9 First News on KCWE starts now. We have not achieved enough to meet our members' demands. Boeing workers are going back to the picket lines after rejecting a contract offer from Boeing. While well, the airplane manufacturer stands to lose if a deal isn't reached soon. Thousands of Kansans and Missourians are casting their ballots before Election Day. We'll share the numbers that officials are seeing so you can be prepared for the long line that may be waiting for you. And MoDOT will be making some changes to the Buccaneal Bridge soon, and there's a good chance it'll affect your drive across the river. We're getting you prepared for the new closures starting tonight. Good Thursday morning, 7 o'clock. Thanks for starting your day with us. I'm Cody Holyum. And I'm Jamie Weiss. First alert meteorologist Katie Horner is here getting us ready for just a roller coaster of a forecast. Yeah, exactly. And we te today is a weather impact day. We've got two things going on. We're going to have a near record high, and we've got thunderstorms that are going to come in later tonight. And regarding those thunderstorms, it would be between 7 tonight and 3 a.m. to get them completely through the area. Our primary concern is going to be hail that could be as large as a half an inch. So we want to prepare you for that if you want to get your car into a shelter before these storms move through. Not every storm will produce that large hail, but they are capable of it. So we wanted to help you with that. You might encounter a few drops on your windshield this morning. This is not the event that has prompted the impact day, but it's just something you may notice specifically over Raymore right now heading towards Pleasant Hill. Just a gentle shower. Today, our high temperatures will be warm. The record is 87. We're calling for 85 degrees here in Kansas City, and it will also be a windy day. Watch as the winds come up out of the south, 15 gusts to 30 miles an hour. If you look all the way across the forecast, daytime hours are fine, but once the sun sets, that's when we introduce the weather impacts for the scattered showers and thunderstorms that will continue late into the night. Johnny Rollins, I know you've already had a busy morning. I've seen some of those accidents in first hand. How are things yeah, now? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yesterday was horrible, as a matter of fact. Uh, I don't know, we had probably five or six significant accidents. Today, only one of those working, but significant it is. Southbound 435, an accident at Wood End. This will put it right at the uh, Kansas River. It might be on the Kansas River Bridge here, 435 Bridge on the Kansas side over the river. And uh, with that, only one lane getting by, as you can see. And it quickly got back to uh, K32. Now it's all the way back to Kansas Avenue and starting to ease back even even further towards I-70. Now a 20, 25 minute drive time delay through here. And as far as an alternate route, I guess you could go all the way up to 635 depending upon where you're gonna go or that would be to the east of course, to the west way out to K-7. Um, I think any alternate route might take you just as long as waiting out in traffic here. If it gets any worse, it might uh, be worth it. So we'll keep an, an eye on that and calculate in that uh, regard to give you the appropriate advice of whether to wait this out or uh, maybe find that alternate route. Back to you in the studio. All right, thanks, Johnny. So let's go ahead and give you a check of your drive times elsewhere in the metro. The good news is we are looking better on the Missouri side, too. No reports of any slowdowns or accidents on the Missouri side of the metro. Like Johnny said, though, we'll let you know if things get worse before they get better. Union workers have voted to reject Boeing's latest contract offer, so they're staying on the picket line six weeks into this strike. The president of the union says that the offer showed some progress, but says it's still not good enough for the machinists who are striking. 64% of union members voted no. Boeing's contract included a 35% raise over four years. More money would go to retirement accounts, plus Boeing offered more job security. But members want a 40% raise over the course of the contract and a return of a pension plan. The union membership decided over six months ago that 40% was the bare minimum. They need to do something, absolutely, they need to do something about a pension. They truly don't care about those of us who are building the planes. And it doesn't appear that way given their actions. The machinist strike started in the middle of September. S&P estimates the strike is costing Boeing a billion dollars a month. So far, no comment from Boeing on the rejected offer. We'll keep an eye on it. Here at home, union maintenance workers at Worlds of Fun voted to approve their new contract. It has guaranteed raises over three years, more paid leave, life insurance, even company retirement contributions, plus new language about breaks, more safety training and OSHA inspections. It took months of negotiations and a strike for the local, the Service Employees International Union to secure this deal.
In just 12 days, polls will open for the November 5th general election. The presidential race is, of course, the big ticket item, but Missourians will be voting on state offices from governor to treasurer, not to mention constitutional questions. And Kansans have a few congressional elections as well. So no need to wait 12 days. Early voting is already underway in both of our states, and there's been record-breaking early voting numbers from across the country, and we're even seeing that here locally. Let's go to KNBC 9's Martin Augustine live in Independence to walk us through some of these numbers and the interest in this election. Hi, Mark. Yeah, good morning, Cody. Here in Missouri, it's called no excuse in person absentee voting, kind of a mouthful. And this is one of the locations in Jackson County here off the square in Independence where you could come and cast that ballot. It's been a popular option since it became available to voters on Tuesday. Just look at this line around the block here on the square in Independence, people lining up, getting ready to vote. Prior to Tuesday, you had to have a valid excuse to vote absentee in person, just like you would for a mail in ballot. But as of Tuesday, you no longer have to. To have that excuse, although you still do uh, for, for mail-in ballots. Now, how many people are taking advantage of this across Missouri? Well, we don't know for sure. Those numbers aren't available a couple of days uh, into this uh, situation here. But over in Kansas, uh, we know that nearly 88,000 voters have cast early ballots as of yesterday. So says the Kansas Secretary of State's office. Also, as of yesterday, more than 146,000 mail-in ballots have been sent out to voters who requested one. And of those, 28,709 have been returned. If you want a mail-in ballot, you still want a mail-in ballot in Kansas, you have until October 29th to request one. That is coming up. That is this Tuesday. Those mail-in ballots must be postmarked by Election Day, which is November 5th. For all your information on early voting and the options available to you as a voter, the best thing to do is check in with your local election office, and they'll be able to provide you uh, with all of that information. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC News. Martin, thank you. U.S. Postal Service is taking steps to speed up election mail, adding deliveries and using specialized sorting plans. More than 99% of ballots were delivered within seven days in the first three weeks of this month. We do recommend that they return their ballot at least seven days prior to the election. But the voters also need to be very mindful of whatever their specific state rules and deadlines are. Postal inspectors say they're now working with law enforcement agencies at every level. If you see anything suspicious, you can report it to the Postal Inspection Service online at uspis.gov slash reporter by calling 877-876-2455. We're of course going to tell you what you need to know before you cast your vote with our handy election guide. It gives a brief summary of all the major candidates and issues, plus links to our previous reporting on all these topics. It also has some important deadlines for anyone who might need more time to make their decisions. You can find our voter guide online line at KMVC.com. You need to make some decisions about your wardrobe today, especially, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like cooler now. Good point. Summer a little later exactly. on. Exactly. Okay. Layers are going to be the key because you're going to want to be able to take off a few of those layers in a bit. But you saw Martin. He's in his winter coat. It is chilly right now. It's 50 degrees here in KC and the wind is making it feel chilly too. We've got an east to southeast wind at 15. This will be gusting up to 30 miles an hour. So Jamie a moment ago said our weather is like a roller coaster. We say that often and indeed this is one week that it definitely will be true. Today's high 85, 20 degrees colder for tomorrow's high temperature. Now if your kids are just getting ready to head out to school, no problems. There's just a couple of brief showers that may pop up, but for the afternoon it will be absolutely dry, warm and windy with that high temperature of 85 and wind gusts up to 30. You saw that 65 for tomorrow and Saturday will be chilly too, a high of 62, Jamie. Okay, appreciate the heads up. Thanks, Katie. We do want to get you prepared for a big change coming on for the Buck O'Neill Bridge project. Starting tonight, MoDOT crews will be switching northbound traffic on 69 Highway to the new northbound bridge. So for the several past months, northbound traffic has been using the bridge meant for southbound traffic. Well, southbound drivers have had to divert using other bridges like the Heart of America Bridge or the Bond Bridge to get north of the river. So in order to make that switch happen tonight, crews are going to be closing northbound 69 Highway at 9 o'clock. A couple of Intersections and ramps in the area will also be closed, like Independence Avenue and Wyandotte Street, as well as the westbound I-70 ramp to 5th Street. The switch is scheduled to be completed by 3 p.m. tomorrow. Southbound 169 Highway, though, will not be ready to be open until December. Kansas City Chiefs once again need another wide receiver, but it looks like they might have someone lined up. ESPN reports the Chiefs will likely trade for veteran player DeAndre Hopkins with the Tennessee Titans. We broke this last morning, uh, yesterday morning. Trade still isn't official just yet. So far this season, he's caught 15 passes for 173 yards, one touchdown, 
you know, he's been on a, a squad that hasn't been doing well. You have Hollywood Brown, where she writes out with serious injuries for Kansas City. So the Chiefs have been looking for a new guy to be Patrick Mahomes' go-to receiver. Juju Smith-Schuster will be out for a bit because of his hamstring, and the team is not saying much about Hopkins joining right now, but Patrick Mahomes is providing some insight. I'm working with guys who come in mid-season. Veach is dealing with all that, so I'm, I'm hush on that. I think uh, the biggest thing uh, for me is just whenever a new new guy gets into the building, it's just, it's just getting on that same page as quickly as possible. Um, even with guys like Kareem in the running back position, um, just being able to talk with him throughout the uh, throughout the protection calls, talk with him kind of throughout the plays, making sure he knows what his job is to do, and then letting him go out and executing, uh, execute it. And I've I've dealt with that uh, throughout my entire career, bringing new guys in. That's part of the NFL. Wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster and defensive end Mike Dana are both staying out of practice while they recover. Coach Reed says they're improving, so that's good. And then we have running back Kareem Hunt now limiting participation in practice because of a hip injury, so we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Chiefs will play their second AFC West opponents of the season, the Las Vegas Raiders, Sunday in Sin City. Kickoff is at 325. Back at home, the Overland Park Police Department is under new leadership. And Doreen Jokers has decades of experience in law enforcement. We sat down with the chief for an exclusive interview. Here are her priorities for the department. Big 12 Conference gearing up for basketball with Media Days. We'll take you inside T-Mobile Center to show you what local coaches expect from the competition this year. On Thursdays, we get the updated drought monitor. It'll come in in the next few hours. But we've got rain in the nine-day forecast that may put a dent in the drought. I'll show you that coming. Your station leading the way with First Alert Weather, Kansas City's most experienced team, KMBC 9 News.
Welcome back. It is 7.13. Taking a look at your first alert traffic. Actually, 7.14 now. And i got to tell you, what a mess on the Kansas side. In an area where we really, rarely have accidents, uh, certainly any serious accidents, you're looking right now at southbound 435. This just south of I-70 at about Kansas Avenue, a little bit before you get to Kansas Avenue. So this just uh, between I-70 and uh, Kansas Avenue is about a three-mile backup from an accident we have downstream at the Kansas River. Maybe two and a half miles. That might have been a little bit of an overstatement, but only one lane is getting by there. And as you can see, this is where traffic is just arriving to the tail end of the backup and gets slower and slower. You can see the farther to the right they go. So with that, uh, we are still seeing this 20, 25 minute drive time delay. I got to think it's close to 30 minutes now. And that may be enough motivation for you to consider an alternate route depends on where you're going of course try to go southbound on 435 if you're trying to get to k10 maybe k7 um i know it's downstream down the road a little bit but k7 southbound down to a k10 from i-70 635 if you're trying to go someplace east of there down to i-35 would get you around this as well but again i think it's going to be an easy 30 minute drive time delay no end in sight here as far as when they're going to get another lane opened up but we'll keep you posted Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. Hey, any suggestion helps there, Johnny. Thank you. Local law enforcement agencies and pharmacies will collect unused prescription medications Saturday for National Drug Take Back Day. It's an effort from the DEA to try to get people to safely get rid of drugs, dispose of them so they don't end up in the wrong hands or in the water system. For a full list of drop-off locations, go to DEA.gov online. All those sites will be open from 10 to 2 on Saturday. Well, there is a new leader at the Overland Park Police Department. Her name is Doreen Jokers, took over as chief last week, replacing former Chief Frank Donchez. KBC 9's Morgan Mobley has already sat down with the chief to talk about her vision for public safety. Morgan, good morning. What did the chief say? Good morning. Well, she's coming into it with a collaborative approach. Residents in Overland Park expressed desire for a forward-facing chief of police, and she believes she is the right person for that role. Kansas is a brand new territory for her. She comes to us from Colorado, where she spent 26 years on the job. Most recently, Joker served as the chief of police at the University of Colorado Boulder. She's passionate about community engagement and sees a need for that in Overland Park. I asked her what some of her top priorities will be. She says accountability, transparency and rebuilding trust. Joker is honored to take on what's been a longtime dream of hers. I was the 14 year old kid that walked into the door and said I want to be a police officer and so thankful that police department had an explorer program. And I'm excited that my current department has an Explorer program. And if that chief would not have taken a chance on me, I probably would not be sitting here. I asked Joe Kirst how she'll define success in this role and so much more. We'll share our full sit down interview with you tonight at six. Cody forward to it, Morgan. Thank you. Jackson County, Missouri legislator Manny Abarco is hosting a town hall on county tax relief programs tonight. He's going to speak with taxpayers about how they can apply, qualify for rebates. He'll answer questions about the assessment process. This town hall runs from 6 to 8 tonight at Broadland Presbyterian Church, and it's open to all Jackson County residents. Big 12 Media Days wrapped up at T-Mobile Center yesterday afternoon. The conference has grown to four more teams, making it 16 teams overall. Five of those teams are ranked in the top 10 of the AP preseason poll, including Kansas, who's ranked the number one team in the country. The sentiment around the country is that the Big 12 is by far the toughest conference in the U.S. KU's Bill Self and K-State's Drum Tang agree. We'll have uh, uh, 11 teams at some point in time this year all ranked you know, uh, uh, 11 different teams. That is what makes this league good. No off nights. And then we play in these great venues, right? So there's no easy road games. Every place you play is it's hard, man. Like they all have home court advantages. And so uh, as a competitor, it, it just makes it great for you, right? You want to go against the best. The Kansas Jayhawks have two exhibition games coming up tomorrow. The men will play the Arkansas Razorbacks inside Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville. Tip-off is set for 8. And then Tuesday night, they host Washburn at 7. KU officially starts the season on Monday, November 4th, as the Jayhawks host Howard inside the fog. Tip-off is at 7. Kansas State has an exhibition against Fort Hayes State on Tuesday at 7, while the Wildcats start their season November 5th as they host New Orleans. Tip-off is set for 7. Today, KU fans will get to see renovations at Allen Field House. We got an early look at this year's Late Night at the Fog. Everyone is invited from 6 to 8.30 tonight to see all of the improvements and exciting to see basketball season is basically here. And an event that's indoors, right? When yeah. Katie says we should be worried about a little bit of rain. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. We have some rain coming. There's a little bit 
of sprinkle activity right now, okay. so don't be surprised if you get some drops on your windshield, but it's the main event later tonight mm, gotcha. after sunset. And that's why today is a weather impact day. It's not for these little, you know, sprinkles that are coming through right now. Let me show you one area that may get a little bit of rain on your windshield as you head in. And that would be between Lee Summit, Greenwood and Pleasant Hill. It's falling apart quickly. Not sure it would even make it to Lone Jack. Today's weather impact is for between 7 p.m. and 3 a.m. tomorrow morning as a line of more aggressive thunderstorms moves through. Primary concern with that line would be large hail. Even up to about a half an inch of hail could fall with that. So not all the storms will produce hail like that, but the potential is there. We want to give you that first alert. So if you want to get your car into a safe spot, you could do that before the evening storms roll through. Nine day forecast will start on the left and will end on the right. And on the left is today's forecast. Looking first at clouds and radar, and you'll see that we had a mostly clear sky with the exception of the clouds that were generated from these brief sprinkles that are coming through. That's from a strong south wind pushing north ahead of the cold front. So here you see the thunderstorms that will come in tonight with hail being the primary concern and blinding rain when it comes down. That will be followed by uh, much colder temperatures that you'll notice tomorrow. The amount of rain would be under an inch, but if we got a half an inch of rain out of this, that would be fantastic. The last rain event, some didn't get any at the most five one hundredths of an inch of rain, so this will be more than the last one and much needed. So we'll be looking at that drought monitor when it comes out later this morning. We know it's going to be worse than it was last week. We just haven't had enough rain. Two cold days follow tonight's rain, Friday and Saturday. Sunday, back up to 73 degrees, and then Monday, Tuesday, both will be in the low 80s, and it will be oh so windy. And then we get into a stretch of wet weather where there's a chance of thunderstorms or rain showers Wednesday through Friday. That includes Halloween. So an early look at the Halloween forecast. We're monitoring for rain. There will be a cold front nearby, so perhaps dropping temperatures as you make your plans. Sunset on Halloween is at 618. Seven twenty-three on the first alert weather impact day. That impact coming after sunset with a cold front with showers and thunderstorms. Some of the storms this evening could produce hail and strong wind gusts. Rainfall amounts between a tenth and a half an inch through early tomorrow morning. And then the cold front moves out. You got to get ready for chillier changes for the weekend. Lots of sunshine Saturday, Sunday highs in the 60s to around 70 degrees. 12 hour forecast today in Kansas City. There is a slim chance of a shower this morning into this afternoon. It'll be very warm and windy. 85 degrees and then thunderstorms are likely after sunset or beginning at 7 o'clock through about midnight here in Kansas City. Then chillier for the weekend. Look at those morning lows. You're heading out to the soccer fields or ball games. It's going to be chilly. You'll need at least a jacket. 62 on Saturday, 73 on Sunday. Warm and windy again Monday and Tuesday with rain chances for the second half of next week.
In 12 days, polls will open for the November 5th general election. The presidential race is the big ticket item, but Missourians will vote on state offices from governor to treasurer, not to mention constitutional questions. Kansans have a few congressional elections as well, and there's no need to wait 12 days. Early voting is already underway in both of our states, and there's been record-breaking early voting numbers from across the country. We're seeing big turnout here locally as well. Look at this line around the block. This is at the Jackson County Advance voting location in Independence. From now to Election Day, you do not need a reason to vote in person absentee in Missouri. It's not clear just how many Missourians have voted yet. We know that in our Kansas counties, those numbers are in the tens of thousands already. You can be prepared for Election Day with our Commitment 2024 Voter Guide. We'll look at the top races in both states, have sample ballots for where you live, all at KMBC.com under the Commitment 2024 tab. Your station leading the way with First Alert Weather, Kansas City's most experienced team, KMBC 9 News. All right, we got a lot to prepare you for weather wise. First of all, super hot this afternoon, and then tonight, thunderstorms. I'm going to show you where hail may fall. Early voting in Kansas and Missouri. It's popular. We have the video to prove it and the numbers too. And a big employer in the metro announces a new round of layoffs. We're getting answers for workers at GEHA. Good morning. Thanks for joining us for First News Today. I'm Cody Holyoke. And I'm Jamie Weiss. Katie Horner here getting us ready. Today is an impact day. We it should is. talk about that. An impact night. Okay. You know, but it's kind of interesting because it's going to be so windy and so warm. You need to prepare for that as you pick out your wardrobe. Not right now. It's kind of chilly and um, there's a few sprinkles showing up right now. But later this afternoon it gets hot and then a cold 
front comes in and that ignites thunderstorms that may produce hail. Very heavy blinding rain for a short time later tonight. Here's the first of two 12 hour forecasts. So Actually, this is in reverse order. This is the second one. So this is tonight's 12 hour forecast where you see the weather impacts do start up around 7 p.m. and continue into the evening. Now for the metro, I think we'll be done with the rain during the 11 o'clock hour, but there may still be some lingering storms more towards central Missouri by 3 a.m. I want you to notice, even though we're looking at the night forecast, we start with a south wind, which we will have all day. After the front, the winds turn to the north, and boy, that is going to cool us down. It will be much colder tomorrow. So now in reverse order, this is the afternoon forecast for today. We start with partly cloudy skies. We'll have a high around 85, two degrees shy of tying a record. A wind sustained around 15, but gusting to 30 miles an hour, Johnny. All right, Katie, taking a look at your first alert traffic. We are seeing some improvement here. <clears throat> Pardon me, as we've cleared the accident we had southbound, I-435 at Wood End. Now, that bridge you see in the distance is over the Kansas River. It was on that bridge where we had an accident. Taking it down to one lane, looks like four lanes are here. One of those, though, as you can see, the acceleration lane from Wood End to southbound 435. Back up at one point, all the way almost to I-70. That is beginning to loosen up. It's still really slow from Kansas Avenue all the way up to K32. Then once you start getting closer to Wood End, it picks up. Problem is downstream at Midland, we've got that other construction where we only have two lanes available. So we're dumping a lot of backed up traffic into what would normally be a little bit slow anyway. We're probably going to gain... Uh, 15 20 minute uh, relief here which would mean still an extra 10 minutes on the run from i-70 all the way down to uh, k-10 and for uh, i-35 i should say uh, even though we've cleared the wreck back to you in the studio all right thanks johnny so let's go ahead and check in on your drive times this morning we are starting to see some delays as you're heading out the door right now i-35 southbound from the merge into downtown kansas city looking at about a five to ten minute drive time delay a little slow on 435 westbound from the triangle in overland Park. That's going to be just a couple minutes though. Good news is we are all clear I-70 Missouri side. We're 12 days out now from Election Day, November 5th. It's right around the corner. Voters in both our states will weigh in on several key issues and races. And voters across the country are already turning out to the poll in record numbers. According to the New York Times, more than 24 million people have cast their votes early. Whether that's by an absentee ballot or early in-person voting, people are taking advantage of the chance to vote ahead of November 5th. And we are seeing that evidence here locally backing up the national surge in early voting. Let's go to KMBC 9's Martin Augustine live in Independence to walk us through those numbers and the interest in this election seems very high this year martin seems like it uh, we have a little bit of evidence to, to look at here uh, here in independent or here in missouri uh, we have now what's called no excuse in-person absentee voting and it's uh, proving to be a pretty popular option you come here uh, this is one of three locations in Jackson County where you can do that, uh, but it's become available to voters here in Missouri earlier this week. Just look at this line around this uh, location here on the square and independence of people waiting to cast their vote. Prior to this week, if you wanted to vote absentee in person in Missouri, you needed to provide one of six uh, uh, valid excuses to election officials. But this week, uh, those, uh, that's not necessary any longer. Uh, you can do that without an excuse. Uh, how many people are doing this across the state of Missouri? We don't know for sure because those numbers are not available, but early voting is clearly a popular option. We have a clear picture over the Kansas side of things. Uh, as of yesterday, nearly 88,000 voters had cast early ballots, so says the Kansas Secretary of State's office. Also, as of yesterday, 146,619 mail-in ballots have been sent out to voters who requested one of those 28,709 ballots have been returned. And if you still want a mail-in ballot in Kansas, you can still request one. You have until October 29th, which is this Tuesday, to do that. Now, those mail-in ballots do need to be postmarked by Election Day, so you have to take care to get that into the mail stream uh, pretty quickly. Uh, for all of your options on early voting in both Missouri and Kansas, the best thing for you to do is to be in touch with your local election office, and they can run you through everything that's available to you. Reporting live, Martin Augustine, KBC News. Martin, thanks. New overnight in the race for the White House New Wall Street Journal poll shows former President Trump with a narrow lead. He's leading Vice President Harris by two points. 
47 to 45 again 12 days out from the election that's compared to August when the VP was up by two but keep in mind both leads are well within the polls margin of error so it's going to be a, a razor thin race right now Harris and Trump campaigns are seeing that and then using different strategies taking different paths to try to get their supporters to the polls Amy Lou is in our Washington bureau with where they're trying to send their messages Vice President Harris took questions from undecided voters in a CNN town hall in Pennsylvania, while Trump turned down that invitation to rally his base in Georgia as he tries to push people who may not typically vote to turn out for him. Attempting to convince undecided voters not to support Trump. Do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Harris characterized remarks from Trump's former chief of staff as a warning why he should not return to the White House. I also believe that the people who know him best on this subject should be trusted. Drawing distinction with her opponent, pledging to be a president for all Americans. Get past this era of politics and partisan politics slowing down what we need to do in terms of progress in our country. And that means working across the aisle. She's a low IQ individual. While in Georgia, Trump playing to his base, attacking Harris. We must defeat Kamala Harris and stop her radical left agenda with a landslide that is too big to rig. Demanding supporters vote early, despite previously discouraging it in the 2020 election. I've been one that says, whichever way, just get out and vote. Be a little careful, make sure your vote gets counted. Trump will be campaigning in Arizona and Nevada tonight, while Harris will be appearing in Georgia alongside former President Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen in order to boost voter enthusiasm and early voting. In Washington, I'm Amy Lowe. Both Trump and Harris are focused on digital first strategies in this election cycle, giving more time to influencers and podcasts than traditional media. Tomorrow, Trump will be on the Joe Rogan Experience. Make KMBC 9 News your home for a commitment 2024 coverage to and through Election Day. We have an election guide online with important dates, profiles of key races, voting rules in both our states, all at KMBC.com. And worth checking in on the forecast, okay, because we know a lot of folks have been going out, have been doing that early voting, and they mm -hmm. need to know the forecast every yeah, day. Just a couple of sprinkles right now. Yeah, and, and they're just about gone. Okay. Just a uh, beautiful morning. It's chilly. It'll be warming up a lot this afternoon. But I want to focus on the drought. This is the last week's drought monitor, but every Thursday morning they updated. So I just got the new update. So I want you to see what will change and keep an eye on this orange color. That's where we have the severe drought. And what you'll see is that expands. So that was the change from another week of mostly dry weather. I know we picked up 0 0.05 inches of rain recently at KCI. But some people didn't pick up any rain. It has been 30 days since we've had a tenth of an inch of rain or more. It's also been 30 days since we've had consecutive days with rain rain. Tonight we have the potential to pick up a tenth to a half an inch of rain. Some may pick up just under an inch and we do have more rain in the forecast for next week. But today is the only day that we have rain this week. We've got evening thunderstorms, which is why today is a weather impact day coming in after 7 p.m. There could be some strong storms embedded in that. I want to show you that with future scan coming up. All right, thanks, Katie. We are following some breaking news from overnight. The machinist strike is continuing at Boeing. Yeah, union members rejected the company's latest contract offer. Nearly two thirds of workers shot it down. Contract offered a 35% raise over four years, among many other changes, but it wasn't enough. Plus, Pensions are a sticking point, and many union members say they won't vote yes without those. And we are getting some answers on what's next for being, um, what is next for these layoffs at GEHA workers. The company is one of the nation's largest insurance companies for government workers about to lay off a third of their workforce. The company is transitioning to a third party administrator based in Wisconsin. GEHA says employees can reapply for jobs with that company or they can take a severance package. They can also take advantage of state help in Missouri or Kansas, like the Kansas Workforce Partnership. There's a way that our staff can assist and tease out what those skills are that they have obtained through work over years. And then we highlight that in their resume, in their job search applications. It's help that's free for those who are looking for a job. The layoffs at GEHA are expected to be finished by January. Agents with the Kansas Bureau of Investigation are looking into the death of a man at the Wyandotte County Jail. He had some sort of medical emergency Wednesday afternoon. We don't yet know the man's name, but we do know that he was in his 30s. Medics tried to save him, but he died at the hospital. A person of interest is in custody in Kansas City's latest homicide. This happened yesterday afternoon, just after 3.30. This was at a market near 36th and Indiana. 
Police say two men got into an argument and started shooting at each other. One had died at the scene. The other is expected to be okay. And a group that helps families following tragedy just marked 10 years in Kansas City. Casey Mothers in Charge held an event last night recognizing its decade of dedication to vi victims of violence. Rosalind Temple created the group after the loss of her own son in 2011. She gets called by police to come to scenes to help families dealing with the loss of a loved one. And Temple knows there is still more work to be done. We got a problem and we have to address the problem. It's a community problem. Until the community, we say we have had enough. You can learn more about Casey Mothers in Charge by going to their website, caseymothersincharge.org. There's a new top cop in Overland Park. Chief Doreen Joker is the city's first female police chief. We sat down with her for an exclusive interview. We'll share top priorities when it comes to her leadership. I think it's going to be a, a fun football game that we're going to get the best out of each and every player on that football field. It's Raider week and the Chiefs are ready to roll. The message from QB1 as they prepare to face the last team to beat the defending champs. You know, I should be preparing you for storms, but I just wanted to take a minute to show you this beautiful sunrise in progress, but we will go over the timing of storms in our forecast for tonight coming up. Today is an impact day. Stay connected with First Alert Weather. KMBC 9 News, leading the way. Welcome back. It is 744. Taking a look at your first alert traffic. Boy, this backup we had behind the accident would end over the Kansas River. Southbound 435 is really hanging on. This is a look from Kansas Avenue. Last time we gave you a look from K32. That's as you get to the bottom of the hill in that Kansas River Basin. Uh, K32 taking you over to uh, 
uh, Edwardsville to the west. Uh, slow to recover through here. I thought we would really get right back to it, but apparently not. And where I thought it would slow down, it really isn't. That's going to be down at uh, Midland Drive, southbound on 435. Really concerned we might have something else going on here, so we'll check on that for you. Back to you in the studio. Appreciate that, Johnny. Thank you. In the meantime, we're keeping you safe with new developments in an E. coli outbreak linked to McDonald's quarter pounders. Companies looking into a supplier of onions. 49 people in 10 states, including Kansas and Missouri, have gotten sick and one person died. Investigators believe the problem could be raw onions served on the burgers. McDonald's says its findings suggest the tainted onions came from a single supplier. We've taken steps to proactively remove slivered onions, which are used in quarter pounders from restaurants in select states. We also made the decision to temporarily remove the quarter pounder from restaurants in select states. First case was identified just last month. The last known person to get sick ate at a McDonald's two weeks ago. Local brewery, Casey Beer Company in Waldo, has a food menu there. They say they're pulling all of the items with onions from their menu because of a recall with its onion supplier. Posted on Facebook, apologizing to customers for any inconvenience. Say they're going on the safe side for this. Not clear if those are the same onions in the McDonald's investigation, part of another recall altogether, but we'll keep an eye on it. The Overland Park Police Department has a new face on the force. Yeah, they're welcoming its first female police chief, Doreen Jokers. KMBC 9's Morgan Mobley sat down with the chief during her first week. Morgan, what'd you learn? Good morning. Well, this is brand new territory for her being in Kansas. She comes to us from Colorado, where she spent 26 years on the job. Most recently, Jokers served as the chief of police at the University of Colorado Boulder. She believes this new role is the perfect fit for her. She's passionate about community engagement and sees a need for that in Overland Park. I asked her what some of her top priorities will be. She says accountability, transparency, and rebuilding trust. I think it comes with conversations and making sure uh, those that are not at the table have a voice and we invite them to the table. I think it needs to be a partnered and collaborative approach. I do think without those pieces, you're not going to have that trust. At the end of the day, I want people to run to us for help and not run away. I asked Jokers how she'll define success in this role. She says her primary focus is culture, and above all, she hopes to leave a legacy of kindness. Jamie. Thank you, Morgan. Well, Chiefs Kingdom is buzzing after yesterday's trade news that the team is acquiring former Tennessee Titan wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. Something we broke here on First News yesterday morning. Now, the trade isn't official just yet, but many fans are excited about what this move could mean for the team. Hopkins is a three-time All-Pro. He's a veteran. He's in his 12th year in the league. His numbers are, are down this year, but his team's not good. So keep that in mind. And there's a sense of optimism that coming to Kansas City will provide a spark for him and the Chiefs. It would certainly help a wide receiver core hit hard by the injury bug. I think it's just up to those guys that's been here to, you know, kind of like show the way and what's going on and, and how we do certain things and, um, and how we work. So, uh, but for our day, just come here like any other system, go to work, man, get better each and every day. Chiefs are focused squarely on Sunday, taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. They're the last team to beat the Chiefs, who are now technically on a 12-game winning streak. You count the end of last season, the Super Bowl and all that. But keep in mind, this is a rivalry game that has always had both teams playing their best. Patrick Mahomes knows come Sunday, it's all about bringing it. Yeah, I mean, we know we're going to get their, their best shot. I mean, that's, that's kind of how it's been every single week. Um, but obviously, when you play a divisional opponent, uh, like I've, I've said in the past, it's a real rivalry between us, our two teams and our two organizations. Um, you're going to get their best shot, and we're going we're gonna to go out there and match that and uh, let the best team win. Chiefs travel to Sin City, take on the Raiders Sunday afternoon. Kickoff set for 325. Our Dennis Evans is headed that way, too, so look for his reports this weekend on KNBC 9 News. And ahead of the game, we're showing off some of the best fans in Chiefs kingdom. This is Wilder in his Chiefs Super Bowl ring, his Halloween costume, Wilder, and his mom created it. His grandparents say he's a huge Chiefs fan. Thank you for sharing. It's great to see that picture yeah. up close now, too. You can send in your pictures along with your name and some other details for us to share at KMBC.com slash best fans. We'll be sharing our favorites this morning and the days leading up to kickoff. I also love all the unique Chiefs Halloween costumes. Yes, for sure. That's next week already. Well, that's, I mean, that's a... That's a great one, too, and you got to I mean, hand it to the parents and, and Wilder creative. as well. Trying to find something that, I mean, it's huge. It's that is be, huge. You, you imagine it has to be lighter. You, you know, hope, right? you can get battery-operated lights. You put oh. those in there, and then there it's a, a sandy thing. Yeah. You see them. That's, that's a great idea. I like that. 
All right, sunrise coming up through some clouds this morning. It is 50 degrees. There's an east breeze right now at 14, but this will gust up to 30 miles an hour this afternoon. So get ready for a warm, windy day and thunderstorms tonight. And then you're driving this morning and you think, wait a minute, she said tonight and I see raindrops on my windshield. There's a couple of sprinkles right now, but this is not why today is a weather impact day. We have a weather impact day because of the risk of strong, possibly a few severe storms later tonight after 7 p.m. through late at night into the very early morning hours. The primary type of severe weather we think we may see would be for hail, some small, and that's not necessarily considered severe, but if it gets about an inch in diameter, then that will prompt a severe thunderstorm warning, which you may get alerted to. But we're thinking most of the hail should be a half an inch size or less, but we just want to bring that to you as a first alert to be kind of ultra prepared. If you have a car, you don't want to take any risk of it getting hail damage. Make sure that it is parked under a sturdy structure tonight. Tonight's weather impact day is the only impact day we have so far. The rest of this week will be sunny and much cooler, 65 degrees on Friday, 62 degrees on Saturday. Here are the details and the timing location for tonight's weather. We'll begin with clouds and radar, and you can see we've got a few clouds right now, and you saw those from our City View camera. And this is part of the strong south wind that is blowing out ahead of the cold front. Cold front comes in tonight, and there you see that line of storms associated with the front. One thing about it, it's moving fast, so it's not going to have an opportunity to put down a lot of rain, but we'll take every bit we can get. We think everything will be under an inch of rain when this comes through, and we have that high today of 85, which is two degrees shy of tying the record high for the date. Sunday, we're back up to 73, and then next work week gets to be very active once again. Windy Monday and Tuesday, temperatures will be in the lower 80s, and then Wednesday we start to introduce a chance of thunderstorms. Same on Thursday and Friday. Look how much cooler it'll be too. High temperatures will only be in the mid-60s, and that brings us to the Halloween forecast. And right now you want to think about costumes that can withstand the rain or a rain jacket that you can put over a costume as we are monitoring for that chance. And we'll, of course, uh, insert an impact if we believe that this is going to rain during trick or treating and it will be getting colder.
We're keeping you safe with new developments in an E. coli outbreak linked to McDonald's quarter pounders. The company is looking into a supplier of onions because 49 people in 10 states, including Kansas and Missouri, have gotten sick. One person even died. Investigators believe the problem could be raw onions served on the burgers. McDonald's says their findings suggest that the tainted onions came from a single supplier. Local brewery Casey Bierko says it's pulling all of their items on their menu with onions in them. They're taking them off the menu right now because of a recall with their onion supplier. They shared this message on their Facebook, apologizing to customers for any inconvenience. It's not clear if those are the same onions as McDonald's or part of another recall altogether. Chiefs Kingdom is buzzing after yesterday's trade news that the team is acquiring former Tennessee Titans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. The trade isn't official just yet, but many fans are excited by what the move could mean for the team. Hopkins is a three time all pro in his 12th year in the league. While his numbers are down this year, it's because he's part of a, a team that's not very good right now. And there's a sense of optimism that coming to Kansas City will provide a spark for him and the Chiefs. The Chiefs will travel to Sin City to take on the Las Vegas Raiders Sunday afternoon. Kickoff is set for 325. Jenny, today's the first alert weather impact day. The most likely time for downpours and thunderstorms is after sunset. So after 7 o'clock this evening and overnight, some of the storms during that time could produce quarter to maybe ping pong ball size hail and 50 to 60 mile an hour wind gusts. We would call that marginally severe. So if you have the KNBC app, we hope you do or no weather radio, it might go off this evening for a severe thunderstorm warning, but numerous severe thunderstorms are not expected. We are hoping that we get some much needed rain out of this overnight. The weekend changes sunny, chillier, Highs in the 60s, near 70. It's going to be hot and windy today on our 12 hour forecast. 85 degrees with storms becoming more likely here in Kansas City after 7 o'clock this evening. Then sunny, dry and chilly for outdoor events this weekend. Saturday and Sunday, 60s and 70s. Very warm and windy on Monday and Tuesday. Highs back in the 80s. Rain and thunderstorm chances beginning Wednesday, stretching through Friday next week. KMBZ.